Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Ben Salem High School. It is the site of a PIAA second round matchup between Archbishop Wood and Lower Marion High School. It's one that folks have been waiting for certainly since they released the brackets and those that might anticipate the brackets prior to the postseason might have been anticipating this game even before then. The last game went a little late. Sankofa and Christopher Dock. Christopher Dock hands, uh, hangs on and they won just about 30 seconds ago. So we went live and we are now joining you here from Ben Salem High School. It'll be Bob Long, Bruce Badgley, Matt Paul alongside. They have 15 minutes on the clock and it'll be an expedited warm-up followed by action here from Ben Salem. This will be unbelievable. No seats to be had. This game was expected to sell out. It was down to the last couple hundred of tickets available early this morning, and it is my expectation that all those seats will be filled here this evening. Lower Marion has brought a great student section. They'll stand right behind their bench, and Archbishop Wood has brought a loyal following as well. What a contest tonight. Thanks for joining us here on Bob Long Sports. This is an Archbishop Wood school-sponsored broadcast. So thrilled to be here. Stand by, and we'll have pregame interviews leading up to tip-off. Grove is the number one Infinity dealer in the region. Faulkner has received the Infinity Award of Excellence given to only 10 dealers nationwide for outstanding customer satisfaction. You'll enjoy our easy, no pressure atmosphere, whether you buy online, in person, or a little of both. We offer loaner vehicles for service or pick up and drop off of your vehicle to make service as convenient as possible. Come find out why. More people choose Faulkner Infinity to be sure.
Okay, welcome to Ben Salem High School. It's the PIAA 6A basketball second round game between Archbishop Wood and Lower Marion. My name's Bruce Badgley, Matt Paul. Bob Long will be along in a moment here with uh, an interview. In fact, he's got John Mosco right now. So take it away, Bob. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks, Matt. We're here with John Mosco, head coach of Archbishop Wood. Here we are, another PIAA state run for you guys, and you have to take on a district champion in Lower Marion. Congrats on getting to this point here tonight. What's the challenge? Uh, they're a very good team, well coached, great coach, 27 and 1 with a great record. We have to be able to, to pressure the ball and keep them out of the lane, play good defense, and then be able to run our stuff and execute. You learned something about District 1 playing Methacton. Jaleel Bethea made winning plays late in the game. Josh Reed was consistent throughout. Any takeaways from that game as you prepare for this one tonight? And I think the team realized that, you know, it means a lot to these schools, and they played it all 32 minutes. So we got to play for 32 minutes, be ready for anything. Uh, we're on the road here, even though it's in Ben Salem. You know, they travel well. It. If you can't get up for this game with this atmosphere, I don't know what, what what you have to do as a player. I'm sure you guys are up for it. A lot of folks watching are up for it, too. Good luck tonight. Thanks for doing this. Thanks, Bob. Thanks for having us. Bruce and Matt, back to you. Okay, Bob. Thanks so much. Bruce Badgley, Matt Paul in the uh, on the track, actually, broadcasting from the track that surrounds this beautiful facility here at uh, Ben Salem High School. Uh Matt, the last time I was here, this was for a, uh, it was actually for a, a, a 5A contest that I saw Imhotep and Marple Newtown play a couple years ago that was a, a real classic, and I expect this to be a classic as well. What do you think? Well, I, I know a lot about Archbishop Wood uh, coming out of the Catholic League, uh, really tough uh, division. Uh, they have some great, great guards. Uh, obviously, Jaleel Bethea uh, is headed to the University of Miami. Uh, where we expect him to play uh, significant minutes at the uh, Division One level uh, next year in the ACC. Uh, Lower Marion is a great team, uh, very well coached, as John Mosco said, to start the game. Uh, I see this being a chess match. Uh, I wonder if Lower Marion is going to come out and apply pressure. Uh, I could see uh, Jaleel uh, getting up and down the floor and getting to the paint. question is, will he be kicking out for threes or trying to get us a dunk or two early here in the game? Yeah, absolutely. And I think if, if there was a game that I think is going to rely on a team controlling, you know, the, the, the defensive glass, I think it's this one. I think that, you know, uh, Archbishop Wood, to get that break going, and I think that they've really got to get, you know, cranking on the break, um, they're really going to have to control the defensive boards. What do you think? Josh Reed's averaging 8.3 rebounds per game. Uh, he's the one to watch. He's very difficult to stop on the glass. They might need to put two guys on him. Uh, again, the, the rule of thumb is to hit him low, uh, be the first man uh, to hit, and to get him out of the paint, drive him to the baseline. We'll see what happens. Back up top here, guys. That was great to talk to John Mosco. And, well, for a big game like this, they moved the five-minute officials conference up to eight minutes. So Greg Downer. It was really good to see him down there. He was ready to go, but he could not be made available for the pregame interview. Bruce Badgley, Matt Paul is with us, the coach, Bob Long, and we have Brady Joyce alongside as well. Let's bring you now inside our broadcast booth, high above here, Ben Salem High School. Matt, this game here, this is one of those games that you've been looking forward to. A lot of folks that pre-diagnose these things that know, all right, <laughs> Lower Marion, they're running through. They might win District 1. Archbishop Wood, wow, might be tough to outlast Roman Catholic. They'll probably be the three seed out of District 12. Some folks knew that this matchup would be coming for better than a month here, and here we are. Very exciting environment. Uh, both teams are fired up. The fans are pouring in. Uh, the popcorn is the only thing that we're missing at the moment. <laughs> but it's, uh, this scene is uh, what you want to get here for high school basketball in, in the Philadelphia region. Yeah, and I think, too, Bob, that, you know, there's the uh, – you know, public school, private, you know, non-boundary school, you know, rivalry that's ongoing. I think there was a lot of chatter throughout the week, clearly, 
on both sides related to this. And I think that only adds to the excitement of this game. I think you're absolutely right. Now you break down some of these matchups. Matt, a key matchup for me is going to be, of course, Jaleel Bate, what he's been able to do. In the last game that we saw, Christian Matos was a guy that went punch for punch with Jaleel Bethea. Here's the question. Is there someone from Lower Marion that can do that tonight? Well, I think it's going to have to be a team effort, Bob. Uh, the only way to stop Jaleel is to put two guys on him. Uh, he's too good offensively. He goes right and left. Uh, he makes 90% from the foul line. And the reality is if you leave him open from deep, he's going to take any shot uh, coming in off the uh, the parking lot. So he's got great range. He gets to the rim. I think it matters what the, the complementary players do, especially on the offensive glass. And Bruce, John Mobley is a guy for Lower Marion that I love this story. He couldn't watch the Super Bowl. He was so sick. That came in the last week of the regular season, but he gutted out a couple key wins down the stretch that led to that team winning the league, Lower Marion, for the third time in four years. He's going to be a key for the Aces here tonight. Yeah, it is. And, you know, they're on such a momentum high. I mean, these guys haven't lost in the state of Pennsylvania this year. I mean, their only loss was, like, in December out in Arizona. So just they exude confidence. I think that's going to show on the court tonight. And I think for Archbishop Wood, I think, you know, one of the keys, and it, it's got to be, I think, how well they're going to perform in the half court. We know how well they're going to do in transition. But are they going to get the ability to perform well in the half court and get good looks because they're not always going to be running up and down all night long? And, Matt, I think the glass, the offensive glass where Archbishop Wood lost Carson Howard last year, the 6'8 guy in the middle. But in the meantime, they play five guards or four guards in a wing, and Josh Reed is the guy that steps up, plays way bigger than his frame, and dominates the glass. That's another thing that Lower Marion they can stop that gives them a really good chance to win the game tonight josh reed's 8.9 rebounds per game in the catholic league he's also shooting 60 percent from the lot from the field uh he's very tough he can also make a three-pointer very underrated as a player and uh definitely a a great um robin to the batman Mm -hmm. uh option for for archbishop wood they have a lot of options uh the key i think will be coach downer and how long he's been he's been uh preparing for this game uh, big chess match I see in front of us, and I think, to your point, Bruce, there's going to be lots of changes throughout the game. Yeah, there will be, and, you know, those Robins, they really have to step up for Archbishop Wood. You have to believe that the Lower Marion is going to try and take away the fail. So how are the other guys going to complement that back and take advantage, you know, and how will Bethea take advantage of it? You know, how is he going to be visually be able to find the guy that's open who's got the high percentage shot? I think it's going to be key as well. Well, I think every team that's played Archbishop Wood this year, Bruce, has come in with a mindset that they're going to take away Bethea. <laughs> He's still averaging 23 points per game and is an All-American. And so how will that happen here tonight? I, I, I don't know. That's the question. But that's where the 30-plus year head coach, Greg Downer, comes in. He's on his way to 700 wins if he wants to stick around for another year. Three state championships, four district titles in his wonderful tenure. And I think that matchup, Matt, to take it from the coach's perspective, against John Mosco, who coached under Carl Aragel, one of the great coaches in all of Pennsylvania for so long. He's built this program through the likes of Rasul Diggins and Colin Gillespie's of the world. And now this is the latest iteration. Another couple high major guys and a really nice supporting cast as well. So two coaches going at it. Two coaches, but two different styles of play. I, I expect um, Lower Marion to try and press, to come out and try to put their 1-2-1-1 their one, one, one press out there. Uh, we'll see if it's effective. If it is, they're going to stick with it to try to speed up Archbishop Wood. But I, I just like the matchup. Um, you know, I don't think there's any underdog here. It's a pick em in my eyes. And it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. That's what makes it fun to watch. That's what makes you want to be here in the gym. And if you can't be here in the gym, a sold-out crowd, you're watching it here on Bob Long Sports. Thanks to Archbishop Wood for helping us get on the air here tonight. Faulkner Infinity, our sponsor here tonight. Thanks to them for their support. 
Faulkner Infinity of Willow Grove is the number one Infinity dealer in the region. Faulkner has received the Infinity Award of Excellence given to only 10 dealers nationwide for outstanding customer satisfaction. You'll enjoy our easy, no pressure atmosphere, whether you buy online, in person, or a little of both. We offer loaner vehicles for service or pick up and drop off of your vehicle to make service as convenient as possible. Come find out why. More people choose Faulkner Infinity to be sure. Welcome back, folks, and we will now pause for the national anthem, followed by introductions and tip-off. And now we'll meet the starters for both teams. Archbishop Wood, they will wear their dark uniforms with checkered on the sides. Deuce Maxi introduced first. Maxi, a tremendous player. Shooting 37% from the floor here this year. And averaging eight points per contest. Jaleel Bethea, the 23-point scorer, the two-time Philadelphia Catholic League MVP, the Miami Comet. Milan Dean, he can jump out of the building, a defensive stalwart. They may not start any true forwards, but he is a rim protector. Josh Reed, one of the best offensive rebounders in the Philadelphia Catholic League, and can drive and get to the hole with purpose. To hear Howell, the fifth starter, Isan Bea will see off the bench for the Vikings of Archbishop Wood. And now we'll meet the Aces of Lower Marion, 28 and one, and the champions of District One. Three District One titles in four years. Introduced first is Owen McCabe, 5'10", senior. Here's Aaron, Adam Herrenkohl, can get to the basket, provides some length, and Heron Cole will be a key here tonight. John Mobley, we talked about that story at the Open where he was sick on the last week of the season, got it through, it didn't miss time. A tremendous player, that'll be some good one-on-one -on -one matchups whether he guards Bethea or Reed. Justin Mabane, the senior small forward, and finally the big guy, six foot five, Jaden Robinson, the senior. Lower Marion with three state titles to their name under Greg Downer. Four District 1 titles. Archbishop Wood, one state title under John Mosco. When Colin Gillespie was playing, they've been to the title game two other times. Were not successful those times. They went, reached the state semifinal last year, dropped it to Philadelphia Catholic League program, Roman Catholic in a familiar battle. But a long way to go, Matt, until Roman Catholic is involved. Another two games before either of these teams would see the Kaolites in a likely semifinal matchup. This is the game of the night in Pennsylvania. Let's get it underway. For sure. We're uh, we're really excited to be here with the Bob Long sports team. Uh, Bruce, uh, this is going to be a dandy. And looking forward to kicking it off with you. It, it sure is. And what I'm looking for to start is which one of these teams is going to get beyond the moment? Who's going to get their game lengths under? Who's going to start just playing basketball instinctively? 50-50 ball goes to Lower Marion. And we are underway. The first 50-50 ball of the night. I like that, Matt. Matt Paul with us. Bruce Badgley. I'm Bob Long with Brady Joyce on the camera. Nice drive to the hole. 
Playing off two feet, extra pass. Great ball movement and a better dish. There you go. Mobley to the 10 off the extra pass from the wing. Lower Marion applies pressure here after baseline drive. And the last touch, they say, by Mobley. Really good pressure after the made basket. Yeah, I like the fact that they're, like you said, Matt, that they're going to put some pressure on them right off the bat. I think that helps both teams get into the flow of the game quicker. Sometimes it allows the other team to get easy buckets, though. First on the floor is Lower Marion, and the Aces are here to play here tonight. Held ball situation will keep it here. Okay, Matt, so you joked about the 50-50 ball and the jump ball. Second 50-50 ball of the night goes the way of Lower Marion. Rebounds are 50-50 balls, loose balls. That's going to be something we're going to be keeping an eye on here tonight, Bob. Maxi struggles to get it in. Oh, considering the talent level of these teams, you know, every advantage, they're going to need every possession. Well, it's a box and one here as Bethea, now they jump the double team on him. Maxi is knocked away from him. Here is Deuce Maxi. Couldn't hit it. And Reed stepped on the baseline. That's his first offensive rebound. It won't be his last. He's a tough, tough guy to keep off the glass. It is a partisan crowd here tonight. There's no doubt about that. It is a packed house here tonight. But Lower Marion with the student section that takes up an entire area here at Ben Salem High School. It's a good take there by Jaden Robinson, unafraid. Maxi will try it again. That one goes down. And there's one of the Robins that's got to step up. Deuce Maxi, if he can knock that down tonight, wow, that's trouble for Lower Marion. Kick out here for Robinson. He is unabashed getting to the rim. Senior at six foot five, the length able to beat Howell to the cup. That's a problem for Wood if they don't stop him on the perimeter. Milan Dean. Maxi again was given the three. Bethea wants the basketball. It's knocked away. Heron Cole. And they say no goaltend. The crowd can't believe it. Skyhook there. I tell you what, and it'll stay here. Can't go far enough back for that replay. That was, that could have gone either way. The ref might not have had a good angle on that. Sometimes it's the trail ref who has the better, better view of that call. Yep. And you have to keep that in mind. Sometimes it's the broadcasters or the folks at home with the establishing shot that have the best view and the officials aren't up here. A moving screen sends it the other way. All right, offensive foul. That's uh, something to keep note at. Here come the aces back. The Woods playing man-to-man. Mobley cuts off the ball. And the back cut was ambitious there and intended for Owen McCabe. Boy, they're really crushing that. Offensive flow way down inside the three-point line, Lower Marion. You wonder if it'll be full-court pressure on dead ball situations all night. And the official kind of taken out of his hands there had to call the foul on Robinson. He's just trying to make a play on the ball and then get down the floor. It's an unfortunate uh, foul on Robinson, but it is what it is. That's his first. Team's first. Maxi, great luck to the weak oh. side block. That's Howell. Well, one way, coach, to get things out of a zone and get the uh, defensive team out of the zone is to break it and get easy looks. The coaches love layups. I know they're going to shoot a lot of threes, but want to see as many layups as you can. There's an open three for Robinson. He's hot. He's playing with a lot of confidence at the moment. That's a good sign for the Aces. Milan Dean with the floater. Couldn't go. It's a tough angle coming from behind the basket there, right on the baseline. 
Mobley. Wood in a pretty tough man-to-man -man out there, Matt. A typical motion offense here. Look for a lot of back back cuts. And Beautiful give and go. Halfway down. Jaleel Bethea has been especially demonstrative today. He hasn't gotten involved once the ball there. And Howell corralled it. It's really solid defense here for Lower Marion. Mobley slices and is fouled. Milan Dean picks up his first personal team second. Wood just a little bit tardy getting back on defense. Well, they're going to have to keep their head on a swivel tonight. I like Mobley's attack there in transition, not settling for the three. Applying pressure and getting to the free throw line also puts a foul on the other team. Mobley, one of the many double-digit scorers. It's a balanced attack here this year for the Aces, 14 points per contest. No reason for Lower Marion not to press here. Certainly not after the made basket off the stoppage. You know, I think that's going to be really interesting, too. It's going to test the wood bench tonight. That's a great job by Bethea. Just get the ball up on the glass. There's no weak side help. Howell right there for the finish. Howell the other way, and he's picked that. Third team foul. Beg your pardon. Second goes against Lower Marion. Great hands on that steal. Yeah, Lower Marion's going to need to take care of the ball. Value the possession, as you said last week, Bruce. we got to value the possession if we're the Lower Marion faithful. Uh, Archbishop Wood needs to keep getting up and down the floor and applying their pressure. Milan Dean. In a zone here now. Looks like a zone look. Well, it's a box in one, Bruce. So what they're doing is they're putting Owen McCabe on Jaleel Bethea. He's not looking to the ball. He's face guarding Bethea, and the rest of them are playing in that zone concept. It's not something you practice against too often. Uh, so it can get you out of rhythm, but I have a feeling that it's not going to work forever. Mobley against Josh Reed, a matchup that's worth the price of admission, that's for sure. Kept him in front that time. With some contact as well. The officials are going to let him play tonight. Well, North Carolina, four corners. Get out. Look at here. I know one patron that doesn't like it. Great cut to the hole. Mobley. Rolling and Archbishop Wood. Yes, that's right. Yeah, immediately Coach Moscow going to his bench. Tough spot to go behind your back. Fortunate there. It goes off the leg of Kazmer. Again here, if you're Dean, where are you going? Four guys coming to you, and you go behind your back with all that space up top. Very risky uh, play. I'm sure he'll learn from it. Brady McAdams checked into the game. Number 23, very proficient three-point shooter with limited volume. So is this guy, Mike Green. Oh. McAdams and... Uh, Milan Dean got tied up, Bruce. Yeah, Milan Dean. Just a great effort there on the rebound. Unfortunately, it couldn't hang on to it out of bounds. But that's the effort on the boards that Woods just got to keep up. It's tough to make a shot coming right off the bench. Robinson resets in the lane. That's beautiful. Matt, he got the matchup against McAdams and goes right to work. He's got a little height on him. Uh, he's having no problem getting what he wants on offense. Maxi in trouble. Milan Dean contact. He was hit really hard up around the face area. But boy, I love the aggressive nature of Wood going to the basket. They haven't had a lot of great looks on offense. What they have been doing is aggressively going to the basket, Matt. Yeah, for sure. And uh, just a great act of sportsmanship there. Mobley went over to check on him because he caught him in the face. Uh, that's always great to see, at, even at these uh, very high competitive levels.
Milan Dean has been excellent from the stripe this year, 82% on the year. And as a team, uh, John Mosco's done a great job, he and his staff, of uh, preaching free throws. Uh, they do get to the glass a lot. They do get a lot of offensive rebounds. And uh, they're just a tough team to beat. Two of two. And Dean will take a seat. A minute 55 to play. Pretty fast moving quarter, that's for sure. Are they going to bring them out here again, make them play? I would. It's not a style that you see very often in the Philadelphia Catholic League. Often you implore them to slow things down and run the half-court offense a bit. Yeah, this this uh, stall ball, if you will, is predicated on great ball handling. And there is a, uh, when you stall and slow down, sometimes you make mistakes on your own. Exactly right. Sometimes it's a detriment to your own offensive flow rather than the defensive effort by your opponent. Playing a little scared at the moment. I think the Lower Marion folks may take a little umbrage with that. <laughs> deliberate. Playing deliberately. Green to the hoop. Oh. Really nice. Baseline drive seems to be working. Good cut by Heron Cole. Heron Cole's got that matchup he wants. He was right there. That was exactly the offense that they needed. A blocking foul oh. is called inside. The partisan crowd wants the travel. And you can be the judge at home. The full well, court straight line drive. Darn the torpedoes. Full speed ahead there for Bethea. There wasn't anything stopping him from getting to the basket that time. I think that was clean. I thought that was not a travel. Impressively so. Yep. Getting from the three-point line to the basket. Good job of getting his feet set, defensive player. Um, but that's a uh, fourth foul on the aces. And it's the second on Robinson by my count, which that, is why he's come to the bench. Well, that, that's going to be key. Those two fouls on Robinson. They can beat Archbishop Wood down the floor. McCabe, great look. Bingo for Carson Kasmer. He can make that corner three. Heron Cole got the giveaway. And they'll reset, likely to take the last shot. Nickel Dimer called. That's the third team foul against Archbishop Wood. Yeah, that was a good foul because he had the baseline and was going right to the basket if he didn't foul him. And there's not as much help as they're going to need. They're not expecting their perimeter defenders to get beat, but the, the lane's open if they can get past their first guy. McCabe thinks about it and knocks it down. 25 seconds left. Isan Bay, and that's not his shot. Lower Marion knew it. Deuce Maxi, nobody closes out on him. And if he's hitting that shot like that all night, that is real trouble for Mar Lower Marion. And Matt, six I seconds, six seconds here. Down to four. He'll try it again at the horn. Not off in time. Archbishop Wood cuts it to three. And, Matt, I want to talk about that last offensive possession. I made the comment earlier in the possession that Lower Marion knew that Bayer wasn't going to shoot the triple. Well, I stand corrected because as Maxie came up to catch that ball, that flanker on the zone has got to come up to him and make Bayer take the pass. Instead, they backed off, sagged. And Maxi made him pay. Uh, you know what? Sometimes the scouting report uh, doesn't always uh, resonate when the game's this uh, when the game's this exciting. Sometimes your your uh, off guards are going to step up and get you 10, 12 points a game. Um, I mean, that's the exciting part of the game. Somebody's going to step up in an exciting way. It's not always the stars. Bruce, what have you seen through eight minutes? Everything we expected. Yeah, everything we expected. I think you know talent on both sides, but obviously the four corners look. For Lower Marion, you know, breaking tendency, showing something different, as you pointed out. This is an, a, a type of offensive flow that is seen regularly in the PCL. So I think it's great. I think it's a great coaching move, and you talked about it, Matt. 
you know, what kind of a chess match is going to go on between these two veteran coaches? I'll tell you what, the aces aren't backing down. Uh, in that moment, they were tentative, but I think uh, they're pretty pretty confident. The kids are looking at the bench. They're looking at the fans, playing with a lot of swagger. They've only lost one this year, and they've won 18 straight. So they know how to win. Playing like they got pocket aces, Matt. That's right. <laughs> they got it stacked against the house here this evening. A great contest, and we're so happy that you all are on board for this contest with us. This is Bob Long Sports, and we are working with Archbishop Wood for school-sponsored telecast. Make sure you follow the channel. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And if you like high school basketball, if you like Philadelphia Catholic League basketball, if you like Philadelphia basketball in general, make sure you come on over, give us a follow, and see what we're up to. 2-3 zone, Mobley at the nail. Open three. It's great offense. And there's the offensive rebound by Robinson. Oh, that's and my th- goodness, if that's on, well, I think it's number three. It's, it's a, a big call. It's a great effort. Unfortunately, he reached in there. Okay, so it's only his it's second. Only his so second. Okay. one of the earlier fouls had to go against someone else. Certainly he was playing like he had one foul, not two, when he went up for that offensive rebound, 94 feet from the basket. All right, so the pressure worked there. Um, the Aces pressure has put, put, some, uh, put, put a little pressure on, on the, uh, the Archbishop Wood team. Uh, it doesn't always turn into a turnover, uh, but that time it did. There's that back cut. Extra pass to the corner. He's knocked one down. He's knocked two down from the corner. Carson Kazmer, the lefty legend. Two in a row. Yeah, and a really good start to the second quarter here for Lower Marion. Oh, my. Fortunate there, if you're Archbishop Wood. And now four on one. And Josh Reed had it pulled away. Four on one, and the Vikings get nothing. Robinson is blocked. Milan Dean. He can jump out of the building. I think he was going to ha- hang on the rim there. I- I've never seen somebody jump that high um, and not hit his head on the backboard. Well, that's Bethea jumping, and then there's Dean for the block. Incredible. Oh, that's that- out of his foot. Great defense by Reed. Maxi comes in replacing Isan Dea. So you look at this offense now, Matt. You have two exceptional, three really exceptional slashers in Reed, Bethea, Maxi. I'm sorry, uh, Reed, Bethea, and Milan Dean with Maxi and Green that can knock it down from the outside. And that's what they're going to try to do with Mike Green. That was just a pretty play there. They just kept passing it. That extra pass for that wide open shot, Matt. Nice and easy. Mobley playing off two feet and they call a foul on Josh Reed that is a challenging call to see and Mobley was on his heels there actually fell backwards wait Uh, what (laughs) that one's going to go against Josh Reed tough call wow the screen to screener action Milan Dean has to be careful. He's reaching in, and the third time is the charm. Yeah. He doesn't like it, but that's 100% going to get called. He's fortunate, Bruce, that it wasn't called either of the first two times. He was, and he just kept, I guess he figured the ref wasn't going to call it, so he kept after it, <laughs> but not the right approach. This time I'll smack him on the wrist. Mobley. Casper still has the hot hand. And so Bethea is on Kazmer for now. Lower Marion under control, playing off two feet, getting paint touches, and if they don't like it, Matt, they're going to bring it back out. Why not? There's no shot clock. Heron Cole handles it. But in the same vein, you know, that could take them out of their own offensive flow as well. For sure. It does, it does force the Archbishop Wood to come out and play him. 
Otherwise, this is going to be a boring half. I like watching the mannerisms of John Mosca, one of the great coaches in Philadelphia. Milan Dean, good hands. But again, Matt, now, what does that do? There's no real shot clock, of course, like you said, but it's tough to hold the ball for that long against a team like this. It resets the internal shot clock. You really need a ball handlers that can, can play. Ooh. All five of them need to be able to handle the ball. At 50% speed, that nearly might have Nick Mobley on the way out. A split action. Back to a ball screen. Kazmer, they overload the other side, so Kazmer can go at it alone. If that went down, that would have been exciting. Green. And there's Josh Reed all alone because he let him fly by. I tell you what, I think that it's affecting, you know, that four-corner offense is really affecting Lower Marion, I think, more than At it's affecting moment. Archbishop Wood. It slowed the aces down. And yet, Bruce, they're still getting paint touches. They're not turning the ball mm -hmm. over all that much. There's a foul called against Isan Bea in the act of shooting. Heron Cole to the line. I like the strategy, you know, getting to the paint. Like you said, Bob, it's, they're able to get by their perimeter defenders, and the help defense isn't there in the gap. Uh, gap defense is what we call it. Um, these guys are playing one-on-one -on, -one on the perimeter, which I, I think favors, uh, well, it favors both teams. But um, Greg Downer, I wonder if he, he's going to press here. They did that early, and it was, and they've done it as the game's gone along as well. It's been effective at times, but Archbishop Wood has also been able to create some easy looks. And a 1-2-2, two, two, three-quarters court pressure is what they go with. A little soft pressure to try to get him into a bad spot. That's a pretty good spot with a pretty good shooter. That's a great look. And Jaleel Bethea picks up the personal foul. Carson Kazmer caught one up near the face. And that's John Mosco helping him up. And Bethea is there as well. I always like saying that. Again, we got great competition here, but great sportsmanship as well from both teams. Bruce talked about it, so you introduced the subject. We can talk about it. Now, there was boundary, non-boundary talk all week. No doubt about that. But I do believe that there's a lot of respect between these two teams. Two of the very best in this area. Howell, contact, count it, oh, and boy. one. And the contact came so deep underneath the basket, Matt, I think that's the reason why. Yeah, if he steps up there, the problem was he was sprinting back to get to that spot. He didn't know where he was. Uh, the pressure from Archbishop Wood is just too much to handle for the Aces. And again, it's attack, attack, attack the basket some more for Archbishop Wood. And hell's an, in, here's an opportunity for Archbishop Wood to put some pressure on if they want. We are tied. Archbishop Wood has fought their way back into this game. Was that a starburst, Matt? Starburst. Am one. <laughs> Coaches on the sideline keep a pocket full of starbursts for the Am one made free throw. And that, by the way, we learned that last week in a Friday game at Upper Dublin. That is Bruce's favorite thing in the whole world, Matt. I kid you not. Wild pass. Isan Bea with it. Archbishop Wood. Poetry in motion for that offense in transition. They're going to need the family pack of the Starburst if he makes this one. <laughs> the touch pass. That's Big great, finish. Great court vision. And the folks love it right in front of us. <laughs> yeah, and that's where, you know, Laura Marion really needs to value the basketball. Very low percentage pass there intercepted by Wood to start the fast break. The momentum shifted to Archbishop Wood here. Josh Reed, the 60% foul shooter. 
three-point lead for Archbishop Wood, their largest of the night. Heron Cole lost the footing, and the foul is called against Deuce Maxey. Any guesses as to what side of the floor we're on here, guys? It's the, the heat uh, is uh, is rising here in the stands. The fans are getting excited. It's a tight game, three-point game. Uh, we're getting to the free-throw line for the Aces. Yeah, give credit to the officials. I mean, th- this is a fast-paced, aggressive game that they're trying to keep under control. Heron, Heron Cole, yep. Heron Cole's a little out of control there. I think that's what made it look like it might might not have been a foul, but uh looks like there was some body contact. And a chance to set up the press again. It's a lower Marion team, and Greg Downer is proud of this. A team that plays so well together up until very recently, not a single college coach reached out about any of these guys. This is a one-loss team that challenged themselves in the non-league. Did not lose in District 1 this year. Yes, they've had stars. Certainly Kobe Bryant first comes to mind. But this is a group of guys that play so well together. Mike Green for three. Here comes Mobley, three on two. And that's playing off two feet for you. Outstanding stop, great body control by Mobley. Outstanding finish. And I tell you, they want the walk. There's no travel there. That's a beautiful basketball play. Maxi, And it's going to stay here. Oh, my. Maxie feeling the juices here, this sold-out crowd. Nearly banked that one home. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I think that Maxie and Mike Green, they've got to continue to take those shots because they've got to force Lower Marion out there to defend them. I agree. I, if I'm uh, Jaleel, I try to get to the box and post up McCabe. He's got size advantage on him. Maxie is deflected and intercepted. A beautiful play by Justin Mabane. It's tough when you get in the air and try to pass the ball. It's a difficult way to play. Heron Cole, and again, they overload that other side so that he can get to the rim himself. I love the offensive play call there, Matt. Yeah, they're putting pressure on him. Oh. Some miscommunication, and Bethea particularly demonstrative here tonight. He's yes, a, it's a miscommunication, but... He's an emotional player, but he plays with a lot of heart, and uh, obviously he's one of the best players in the country. Jim Laranega down in uh, University of Miami obviously loves him. Uh, he's got a real bright future. Uh, some say he'll be playing in the NBA someday. He's going to need to kick it in gear here to, to keep um, Archbishop Wood in check. Did you see Laranega coming back for another year? I believe it, to, to coach Jaleel. I tell you, you're in your 70s. You're coaching in Coral Gables. you got John Ruiz helping with NIL. I'd never retire. <laughs> I agree with you. Let's see what kind of possession we get here for the Aces. Boy, McKay pretty good with the ball in his hands like a yo-yo, huh? It's uh, it's one of these things that, you know, it, it's really important. It gets overlooked, doesn't doesn't get measured in the, in the scorebook. But you got to be able to have guys who can get in the paint and find, find players. If they can get to a jump stop, they're going to have guys cut into the basket like they did on the very first possession. And the Boo Birds rain in. Lower Marion contingent loves it. The stalemate. Yeah, back to the chess uh, analogy. I've been a part of games like this uh, in the past as a player. It's a lot of fun when you're winning. I don't uh, think this is chess, Matt. In chess, somebody has to make a move. Yeah, at some point. Mobley. Lower Marion now gets into the offense. McCabe at 8-3. Strong rebound, but taken right away. Wow. What a finish. Oh, my. Kazmer. Kazmer has been awesome, not just the three-point specialist. That is a big play. Now does Archbishop Wood hold for one? I don't think so. Jaleel oh. Bethea were tied. That is incredible. He knew he was going to do that as soon as he got the ball. (laughs) You know, he hasn't had a lot of chances this first half. Laura Marion has really kept him under control. 
Well, the box in one, and they commit a second defender when he has the ball. They'll get beaten by someone else. Mobley! They still got five seconds. What a look! And that's last touch by Mobley. This is unbelievable, guys. Mobley takes the lead, but Thea knows that Josh Reed is heading down the floor. There comes the ball. Brilliant. That's a winning play. Great hustle. And it was knocked out of bounds. Tough to see on that camera angle. Knocked out of bounds by Mobley. Wild shot. Bethea. That was good if it goes. <laughs> Count it for Milan Dean. Wow. They're going to talk about it. It looks good. Here's the beauty of it. Instant replay. Looks good. It looks good. And we can even slow it down more than that. One second. Ball is off his hands, and it is good. End of quarter, end of half, end of game. Nobody boxes out. As slow as we can do it. Ball is off the hands. That's a big play at the end of the, end of the half. Momentum shifter. Uncle Mo is in favor of Archbishop Wood. Little uh, extracurricular there at the end of the half. John Mosco is a little upset. Um, everybody will take a take a chance to relax here for the next five, six minutes, and we're going to get <laughs> back in gear. Yeah, absolutely. But, I mean, what presence of mind by Bethea to just kind of heave it at the basket, and literally he was hoping one of his teammates was going to be there to put it in. And Milan Dean, uh, knowing that there's a lot of offensive rebounds there, uh, that's a big play, you know, to, to get the, the Vikings that big bucket there at the end. Um, I've been really impressed with the way Archbishop Wood has uh, kept their composure. A lot of times when a team is, is uh, being deliberate with the ball, uh, you can lose your cool. But Jaleel's been playing great, uh, under control. Uh, I'd like to see uh, him get inside. He's got, you know, several inches on McCabe in the second half. Want to thank again our sponsor, Faulkner Infinity, for sponsoring this telecast. Stay with us, and we'll be right back. Faulkner Infinity of Willow Grove is the number one Infinity dealer in the region. Faulkner has received the Infinity given to only 10 dealers nationwide for outstanding customer satisfaction. You'll enjoy our easy, no-pressure atmosphere, whether you buy online, in person, or a little of both. We offer loaner vehicles for service or pickup and drop-off of your vehicle to make service as convenient as possible. Come find out why. More people choose Faulkner Infinity, to be sure. That one, then? I won't put my lips on. I just need a swig. Oh, this, that's just, I think that's a uh, fair game. Unless Matt wants it. to only 10 dealers nationwide for outstanding customer satisfaction. You'll enjoy our easy, no-pressure atmosphere, whether you buy online, in person, or a little of both. We offer loaner vehicles for service or pickup and drop-off of your vehicle to make service as convenient as possible. Come find out why. More people choose Faulkner Infinity, to be sure.
Faulkner Infinity of Willow Grove is the number one Infinity dealer in the region. Faulkner has received the Infinity Award of Excellence given to only 10 dealers nationwide for outstanding customer satisfaction. You'll enjoy our easy, no pressure atmosphere, whether you buy online, in person, or a little of both. We offer loaner vehicles for service or pick up and drop off of your vehicle to make service as convenient as possible. Come find out why more people choose Faulkner Infinity to be sure. We'll jump back into your living rooms here, folks. Bob Long, Matt Paul, and Bruce Badgley alongside. Second half about to get underway. Archbishop Wood and Lower Marion High School going at it here, and we'll bring you back up top here at Ben Salem High School inside the broadcast booth. He's Matt Paul, the coach. Bruce Badgley, the king of District 3, is with us. And I'm Bob Long, humbled to share the booth with these two guys here tonight and humbled to be here for this contest. Matt, let's start with you. From a coach's perspective, what do we see out there in the first 16 minutes? Well, they both gave great effort. Uh, it was a really well fought. Uh, we call it four rounds. You know, first first four minutes, uh, second four minutes, uh, pretty even. Uh, I thought Mobley was the key there, um, getting himself into the paint, inserting uh, his athleticism into the game, and obviously Jaden Robinson really uh, made a big impact for Lower Marion to start the game. Bruce. You know, I was impressed. Uh, you know, I think contributions by Deuce Maxey and Mike Green, I think, really helped Art Bishop Wood in the first half. I think it's going to pay dividends down the road because if they can knock down a few shots, that's going to make Lower Marion defend the whole court, and that's really what they need to do. They make they need to make Upper Marion defend that whole court to give some better opportunities to Jalil Bethea. Lower Marion, of course. Excuse me, Lower Marion. Home of Kobe Bryant. Yes. <laughs> Other scores, by the way, as we go across the state. So we'll look down the 6A bracket. A lot of these games are in progress. So if you're watching us at home and taping other games, <laughs> now's the time to put us on mute for just about a second. But Springford leads at half by an unbelievable score of 19 to 12 against Springfield, Delaware County. Roman Catholic took down. Westchester Henderson tonight. Parkland has a two-point lead over Chambersburg. On the bottom half of the bracket, Coatesville took down Cumberland Valley. Down wow. goes District 3, Bruce. Wow. Wow, that's surprising. Cumberland Valley, District 3, 6A champion goes down. You know, really solid club. Kind of surprised though. at that result. Yeah. Coatesville's extremely talented. Beat St. Joe's Prep earlier in the year. Was a great District 1 team all season. Redding takes down McDowell in overtime wow. out of District 10. That is incredible. The Red Knights have really stepped it up. Uh, they didn't win the District 3 championship, but they've continued to improve the entire season uh, with new head coach and, you know, a new cast of characters. These guys are going to be a force down the stretch. And then last two on the bracket. Central York, uh, I believe, won the game. If not, is leading handily over Red Lion. And Upper St. Clair took down State College. So some big matchups there and a team that I really liked. I know Warren Goodling, Bruce, our, one of our normal partners, really likes Central York. 
The five seed out of District 3 could end up making a run all the way to Hershey out of the bottom half of the bracket. Yeah, very, very talented club. And uh, we saw them earlier uh, in the year. They were a little bit shorthanded, but, boy, do they play a great brand of basketball. So that sets the stage for the rest of the state. But really, in this gym right now, Matt, this is all that matters to anybody here. Expect Jaleel Bethea to get into the paint uh, one way or the other. He's only taken four shots. Uh, he averaged 24 points a game in the Catholic League. Four shots doesn't get you to 20 points. That's great hands by Heron Cole. Provides a little bit of length at that sh long shooting guard, maybe a wing type of position. He does it all. The shell with only four players with, with the That's box right. and one. And it worked that time. As soon as Bethea caught the ball, McCabe is the one guarding him man-to-man, -man, face guarding, and they send that second defender to Bethea. Someone else is going to beat him tonight, they're saying. Early third quarter action. Playing man-to-man. -man. Mobley again into the paint. Mobley is blocked. That's Tahir Howell. But they and three guys come to him. Doesn't much matter because he finds Josh Reed in a good spot. Able to get downhill. When Bethea gets the ball in transition, the Aces are going to have a hard time stopping him. In the half court, they're having a better ch better chance. Tough shot for Heron Cole. And Bethea is contributing on the defensive glass now. Josh Reed. He's fouled, and that's the third on Jaden Robinson. A good. big early second half call. Yeah, just real good effort. Going right at him and right at the basket there. Concerted effort to try and draw some fouls. Bruce, I bet that was a point of emphasis uh, in the locker room. Um, the coaches review you know, their own team fouls, but obviously how to put the other team in under pressure. Um, and now with Robinson with three fouls, the next play would be to go at him one more time. Coach Matt Paul with us here. Coach, I've always been curious because everyone talks about halftime adjustment. In reality, when that ball goes through the hoop or that clock expires in the second quarter, that clock goes to 10 and it starts ticking. It probably takes you 90 seconds to get to the locker room. You're back out with four or five minutes taking shots, 90 seconds to get out of the locker room. How much are you really talking about? Well, uh, it depends on your team. Uh, these guys know their team. Uh, they have very smart players. Both teams have very smart players, very experienced players. They're both starting seniors and juniors, so they've all been here before. They both, you know, know how to win. Like DJ Khaled said, all they do is win both these programs. Uh, and I would say very little do you have to tell them uh, at this point. You know, they've been doing this since, you know, some teams start practicing in, in May for the, for the next season. Uh, some of the Catholic League teams that I, I know or up in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning, getting ready for their first game in November or for the live period. So um, these guys know what they're doing. Uh, the coaches are giving them a little bit of information. Obviously, Josh Reed knows he's got an advantage by driving the ball versus shooting the ball off the perimeter. I just want to take a look, and it's this way around the entire track. Just an unbelievable night here at Ben Salem High School. Sold-out crowd capacity the excess is going up top and there's really nowhere to stand up here on the track we got some friends never knew we were this popular guys it's like a one two two zone there with Bethea out on top Mobley double team comes on him picks up his dribble in a tough spot extremely fortunate to get it back and couldn't cash in not not his shot Mobley uh, he's been really effective getting into the paint uh, and obviously the pressure from Archbishop Wood is is forcing the Aces to take shots they may not want to take. Yeah, and that's really the first time in the entire game that you can see it kind of flip, where uh, more, Lower Marion more on their heels than Archbishop Wood in the half court. Counterpoint, I know how he got to that point, picking up his dribble and getting there, but, I mean, was that really a bad shot? In rhythm, wide open, just a little too much juice perhaps. I'm a little old school in... Uh, What's working is getting it into the yep. paint and kicking it out. Fair enough. Speaking of getting into the paint and kicking it out, Howell thought about the three. Kazmer picked up the personal. That's the third team foul against Lower Marion here in the first two minutes of the third. Yeah, already three fouls. 
Now, you can't take the ball out of your shooter's hands, Bob, but I would say if you want to apply even more pressure, I wouldn't take an open three here. Josh Reed is fouled by Mobley. He met him at the summit. Four team fouls. And that's the third on Mobley. Josh Mobley, one of the hearts and souls of this team. Call him the ace of hearts. I like that one. Speaking of hearts, I, I got to share that, you know, my dad, you know, in addition to all the coaches uh, they had on our bench uh, at Chestnut Hill Academy, my dad would let us know when we were in foul trouble or when we were in the bonus. It was a point of emphasis that has stayed with me. Reed cashes in one of two. So the next foul will put Archbishop Wood in the bonus. Remember at the high school level, a change in the rule. So you count to five in each quarter and it resets after every stanza. Looks like they're back in a man now, Matt. I'm surprised how far out Jaleel's playing. Travel is the call. Oh. Lower Marion wanted the call against Milan Dean. Wouldn't get it. Boy, just a real tough start for Lower Marion here to the second half. Back to their press. Deuce Maxi comes to the basketball. Reed, Bethea, really good catch. Great pass into the paint. Opposite side, lefty layup. Easy bucket for Archbishop Wood. And Greg Downer wants a full timeout with 5.22 to play in the third quarter. Boy, I can understand that. I mean, his team really just doesn't look sharp to start the half. And I like what you said. I think that they really need to get back into that full-court press because that's when they were playing their best basketball in the first half. And if we go back to the, the play at the end of the half uh, to gain momentum, the two-point putback uh, by Milan Dean. And now they're on an 8-0 run. Um, the, the momentum is clearly in favor of Archbishop Wood and smart timeout by Greg Downer. We'll take the timeout with them. Thanks to Faulkner Infinity for sponsoring tonight's telecast. Faulkner Infinity of Willow Grove is the number one Infinity dealer in the region. Faulkner has received the Infinity Award of Excellence given to only 10 dealers nationwide for outstanding customer satisfaction. You'll enjoy our easy, no pressure atmosphere, whether you buy online, in person, or a little of both. We offer loaner vehicles for service or pick up and drop off of your vehicle to make service as convenient as possible. Come find out why. More people choose Faulkner Infinity to be sure. Follow along tonight and throughout the PIAA State Playoffs at Bob Long Sports. That's at Bob Long Sports on Twitter and Instagram. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. That's the best thing you can do. Get notifications when we go live. Stay following along with some of the best high school action in the state of Pennsylvania. Football, basketball, and more. Thanks to Archbishop Wood for sponsoring tonight's telecast. Great passing without the dribble until the drive. Great after timeout play. Justin Mabain puts it in. And that's Greg Downer. I guess he's drawn up a play or two in his day. The guy knows what he's doing. Reed. Tough matchup. Wild shot. Uh huh. Logo time. He's done it before. He'll do it again. Well, he's doing it with a purpose. He's just trying to draw that defense out. Free up some lanes so he can get to the basket. Our split action here. Dribble handoff, looking for back doors. Robinson is fouled. Not in the act of shooting. Yeah. And it's really good look here, Matt. I love the pass. Uh, bounce pass would have made it maybe a little easier to catch, uh, but that's a great look. These guys know how to play the game uh, off the dribble, uh, and Robinson, I bet, would want to take that back and put that ball up and get to the free throw line. Jaden Robinson has had a very nice night this evening. That's Tough a, pass for that, McCabe. That was the third foul on Milan Dean. Post-up advantage here. Uh-huh. The guard going at it in the post. They've gone after Mike Green a couple times in the post. 
Mabane couldn't hit it. That's a fastball. I'm not sure about that one. I wonder if we'll get a conversation here. The officials are going to talk about it. And they're going to keep it here. Tough call. That's officials in a tough spot to make the play. That very clearly touched Mabane's hand last. Yeah, the call came from all the way across court. McCabe. One-on-one on on the wing. And that time it's going Archbishop Wood's way. They got two stops on the possession. Great defense by Deuce Maxey. McCabe and Maxey with a little extracurricular. They got to keep their control, keep their emotions in check as things heat up. Deuce Maxi got all the way to the baseline. Maxi working hard. Not known as an inside player, but he fought hard for that basket. He worked real hard for that basket, Bruce. No good on the triple. Will they try it again? Heron Cole blocking foul. Maxi a little late and a little deep. In a baseline drive, it puts a lot of pressure on the defense. A uh, little bit out of control in the drive, but I think it's the right call by Kevin Reagan. The post-op opportunity. And there they go. Howell matches up against Robinson. And a foul is called. And the question from this side of the floor, Bruce... Is did he slide the pivot foot? You can oh. see at home at 50% speed. Clearly, he traveled before even the foul. Look at there. I don't know. I, left foot stayed pretty firm. I don't know. In the NBA, it's a play on. Yeah. It's so electric in here, Bob. It might have been the electric slide there. <laughs> oh, baby. That was for my son and daughter, who uh, they're now the big followers of Bob Long Sports. So there that was go. for Richie and Finley at home. It's about time they figured out, you know, uh, they would be following Bob. And <laughs> I'm not going to follow my dad. I'll follow Bob Long. That's nah, right. Come on. Matt Paul's the start of the show. Uh, <laughs> People are tired of Bruce Badgley and Bob Long. Uh, it's great to be here. It's really my pleasure. Uh, I had a lot of fun with you guys last week, and uh, I've been watching film and listening to commentators ever since. Really appreciate the art. You do a great job with it. Thank you. Archbishop Wood, they lead by three. Maxi again, nobody stops the ball. It's a great look. It really is. I still, uh, I think they forget they have Jalil on their team, <laughs> who uh, is, is hard to stop. This time they do get the travel against Mobley. Yeah, and I think that, you know, because they're so open, because these guys are getting the lanes, they're trying to take advantage of it. And, I mean, to your point, Matt, they can't forget, you know, where their bread is buttered. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and then it just encourages him to take shots that maybe he not, he may not want to take. Bethea for three. That's a strong rebound by Heron Cole. Mm. And they call a timeout. That's a brilliant play. Heron Cole, the senior, it's a very veteran-laden group. And he was going nowhere fast after that man's rebound on the defensive window. It's a good call there. Yeah, it was. It- you know, Bethea, I think he just kind of rushed the shot. I mean, he's in a situation now where he's out of rhythm because he's not getting a lot of looks. He thinks that he's got to make that, you know, these shots and has to score points. And he's just throwing up whatever he got. And maybe that might not be the best opportunity for him. It's what the Aces want him to do. When he drives the ball to the basket, he just attracts so many uh, de- defenders that he's a great passer. He can get above the rim. Um you know, at Moscow, Coach Moscow, I'm sure, is encouraging his team to find him. Uh, but like you said, Bruce, they all have a license to shoot the ball. And they're all get, they're getting good shots. Um, I just like to see him get in the hands of a guy who can get you 20 a game. That's down only two timeouts left now for Lower Marion in the game. Home run pass for Mobley. It's only Mike Green back there. Another play out of a timeout, Matt. He's two for two, Greg Downer. That's called experience. 
the greatest teacher. Bethea. There comes the double on him as soon as he catches it. And that puts Archbishop Wood in the bonus. That foul right there. A big call to send a proficient foul shooter, Mike Green, to the line. Smart well, smart basketball for Archbishop Wood. Uh, you can't draw that up sometimes, but when you put pressure on the other team so, so often, you're going to get free shots at the line. That's a good offensive play. Proficient by percentage, not from a volume standpoint. Single digits. Free throws taken this year. Two-point game, late stages of the third quarter. The champions of District 1. The Lower Marion Aces. The number three seed out of District 12. The Archbishop Wood Vikings. Their postseason fate just a few weeks ago hung in the balance. Mm. Heron Cole. Really good job to wall up there. And Jaleel Bethea. Tahir Howell. And it just won't go down. Heron Cole brings it down, and Bethea picks it up. And he's got to be careful. And we call those frustration fouls. You can see him uh, getting off the floor. His emotions got the best of him, um, unfortunately, for, for Bethea. But, you know, you get the ball back in your hands of the aces here, down two. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing them get in the paint one more time. A frustration foul, Matt, almost turned into a frustration technical. Could have been. Referees did a good job of managing that. But as I was mentioning, they weren't sure they'd be playing in this game. They weren't sure they'd be playing in the PIAA playoffs. A quarterfinal loss in the Philadelphia Catholic League to Father Judge pitted a 6A Father Judge against 6A Roman Catholic in the Catholic League semifinals at the Palestra. Had Father Judge won that game, Archbishop Wood's season would have been done. Mm. Josh Reed, that's a held ball. Unbelievable play. Great defense. Stays here. It's a big chance to take with the next foul, putting Lower Marion into the bonus. Man, but a great job of restraint by these officials as well. That's such an easy one, Bruce, to just blow the whistle on. Yeah, it sure is. And, you know, we, we touched on that a little bit earlier in the broadcast, but I think they've done a good job keeping the game under control. Mm. Oh, great, great defense. deal. Now Wood has numbers. Mm. Reed. Great pass. Alondine. Oh. Lower Marion got caught napping there underneath their own basket. Underneath their ba- uh, the, uh, the Wood basket there. Aces just need to keep attacking here instead of uh, holding the ball out. They're just as good as Archbishop Wood. Need to continue to play with confidence. McCabe a bit too strong. This is where Wood is dangerous. Reed mm. is blocked, but fouled. Mobley again meets him up near the rim, and looks like Reed got it in the face. He is holding his face with both hands. That's the fourth personal foul against Mobley. Yeah, and it's amazing to me how when Lower Marion has gotten into that four-corner offense, that the aggression factor Ooh. has just been ratcheted Man. way down. Bruce, I apologize, but that That's replay right. there will slow it down even more, and we'll tell you whether he makes it or not. The right hand of Mobley is going to smack Reed right across the face right there. Bang. Oh, man. Yeah, that's a tough one to argue then, and he wasn't to his credit, but. Yeah, Coach Downer's uh, staying with his senior here, keeping him uh, into the game. Uh, many coaches would take, uh, you know, their top scorer out at the end of the third here with 47 seconds. But I think it tells you what they're going to do on this next offensive possession, though, Matt. Hold for one. Right? You don't put them back on defense. I, I agree. Uh, I know Bruce likes the hold for one uh, play, uh, but it's tough to do sometimes. And sometimes when you drive the ball, you risk an <laughs> offensive foul. Bruce would coach a game and win 2-0. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, that's not I'm it. Kidding. I mean, it's only, you know, at the end of a quarter or what have you. I'm joking. I know. Heron Cole. He's in, Mo- in trouble. Mobley. 
They keep moving that ball. 26 seconds left. Heron call hangs and hits. Wow. It's a big bucket. And now can Lower Marion get one stop? Heron Cole got to his spot. Great footwork and definitely under control to make that bank layup. McAdams, no. Yeah. And now with five seconds left, mm. Heron Cole with a great turn. Heron Cole all the way. Oh. He's fouled in the act. Wow. With four tenths of a second remaining. Nobody stopped the ball. Simple as that. Looked like John Stockton down there coming coming down the middle of the lane. He wasn't passing it either. He knew how much time was on the clock. He had the, the time in his head and great play. Tough foul there at the end of the quarter. Yeah, now he's getting Bethea out. Yep. That's just an offense-defense. Don't put him on the floor. Have an opportunity to pick up a fourth personal. One of two for Heron Cole. I, the, the clock didn't really start there. I'm not sure in reality he got that off in time. <laughs> but but the officials are going to listen to the horn. Sure. Sure. They're not watching the clock. They're listening for the horn. Oh, my goodness. What a game, guys. Exactly what we expected. And, guys, I know we talk about these guys, or we've mentioned it a few times now, but it's important. Support the folks that are supporting high school athletics. The reason that this game is brought to you live here today is first and foremost due to Archbishop Wood. School-sponsored broadcast here this evening. Thrilled to be here. That's why you see the big W in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. But Faulkner Infinity has stepped up and broadcast the games along the way for Archbishop Wood on their run through the state playoffs. Let's hear a little bit from our partners. Faulkner Infinity of Willow Grove is the number one Infinity... Faulkner has received the Infinity Award of Excellence given to only 10 dealers nationwide for outstanding customer satisfaction. You'll enjoy our easy, no-pressure atmosphere, whether you buy online, in person, or a little of both. We offer loaner vehicles for service or pick up and drop off of your vehicle to make service as convenient as possible. Come find out why. More people choose Faulkner Infinity, to be sure. Two-point game. Archbishop Wood trailed for a good portion of the first half and they have found their way back into this game. They led by a couple of possessions at times. Lower Marion cuts it to two. And we're coming in for landing here from Ben Salem. One more ask. Make sure you follow the channel here, the YouTube channel, and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Time to play America's game as well. Where are you at? Let us know on the YouTube chat where you're watching the game from, and we'll try to give you a shout-out on the air. Thanks for watching. Jaleel Bethea. It hasn't been a high-volume night, and it's an offensive foul. He won't get a look there. The moving screen after the handoff called against Mike Green. Well, it's easy to call something when both guys fall down. Um, I didn't see it, I see didn't. the action, but you could see it here at home. Yep. That's a good call. And a pretty heady play by a veteran defender as well to seek out that outside hip. Green certainly wasn't established, just trying to run off the ball. Regular motion call here by Greg Downer. They're just going to let them play and see what options they can create on their own. McCabe. He's been the conductor here tonight. Boy, somebody has been awful quiet has been Robinson for a bit. Let's see if they can get him more involved down low. Mobley with the basketball. Now Heron Cole. Mm. Back door was open there for McCabe. Heron Cole. There's the back door. Couldn't hit it with the left hand. Green, can he get there? He sure can. It's an excellent pass. Bang! Oh. Bang! He just knew that. When he got that ball in rhythm like that, it was going down. Mike Green. Think uh, back to Mike Green. Heron Cole for the answer. And Milan Dean without fouling. Julio Bethea! Oh. Hello! Timeout. Thanks for the timeout, Greg. Let's watch this one again. 
airlift. See you later. Bringing the fans to their feet here at Ben Salem High School. I mean, this place is about ready to come unglued. The loudest it's been all night, certainly here on the Archbishop Wood side of things. And that's the biggest lead, I believe, of the night for Archbishop Wood as well. I've seen a lot of great dunks at the high school level. I saw Joe O'Brien this year dunk a basketball with only one shoe on from LaSalle College High School. But that might be the greatest high school dunk I've ever seen. From potentially a future NBA lottery, lottery pick to us three up here on, in your broadcast <laughs> booth. But Bob Long, Matt Paul, Bruce Badgley. We just saw something special here, guys. But I'll tell you what. You start to pivot the focus here. Lower Marion, they got one timeout remaining here. But this is a veteran team. They've been down before. They know how to play in this position. They're going to take the energy in this building. They're going to internalize it and, I think, play their game. They still have another run in them. One possession at a time. Again, this goes back to philosophy. Do you go come out and try to get a three-point shot or just try to get the best shot you can? You know, Wood has some, some foul trouble, so I would keep attacking the glass. Yeah, and Wood here... You know, the second half has found a way to get Bethea the ball. He's cooking at the moment. Robinson, great position. The double team doesn't come. I'm a little surprised it didn't. Good finish. Leave your feet and you're going to get beat. That's Dr. John Giannini. But I'm not surprised that they're getting Robinson back in the flow on offense. They really need him down low. Great after timeout play. Third time. Third time. Mm. Bethea now. Two defenders on him. Mike Green, a deep one. It's oh, good. Oh, Mike Green. I talked about him at halftime, how, how important he's been in this game. That pass he made when he passed the ball back in bounds. Uh, Great it, momentum shifter. No doubt. It was a two-point game at that point. Up the floor, Bethea, do it again. Ten point lead is the largest, and that's the last time out called for Lower Marion, but they got to get the wheels on, and they have to do it now. Yeah, I mean, they have come off real fast. And that's Archbishop Wood for you. I mean, they can just come out. I mean, it's a lightning bolt that hit, you know, Lower Marion right in the tuchus here in the fourth quarter. Bruce, how do you spell Tukas? Um, <laughs> capital T. Don't answer that question. <laughs> that reminds me of my el elementary education. I couldn't use the other words. Uh, St. Martin at Tours. But uh, to your point, the, the mo momentum has clearly shifted in favor of Archbishop Wood. Um, you know, Greg Downer knows his team. Uh, he knows that they're either going to come out swinging here or they're going to get knocked out. Uh, and I believe they're going to still hang in there two at a time. You got a lot of time left in this game. Uh, body language doesn't look great at the moment, but it comes down to belief and this is winner go home. Well, you, you have to hope that that press is going to energize them again to get back in this game because they're going to have to start, you know, pressing, I think, to get back in this one. Or try to get those starburst plays into Robinson where he gets, <laughs> gets a shot fake. You know, shot fakes are free. I throw the ball back in. Don't settle for the three-point shot at this at this moment. You still got 527 left. We're yeah. looking at a carbon copy, Bruce, of the Archbishop Wood Methacton game from last Saturday, where Jaleel Bethea really was held relatively in check. I mean, by his standards, certainly had a decent first three quarters in that game. So High thankful. off the window, it won't go. But the fourth quarter of that Methacton game was his time. He wants the ball. Instead, Green's going to get it. And now Lower Marion runs the floor. Kazmer really needed that one. Good reverse pivot. Open three. Yes. Corner three. Corner pocket for Owen McCabe. Seven-point game. Still an eternity to go. Robinson's way out of position here. And Archbishop Wood taking a play out of Lower Marion's playbook. Isolation is the call. Bethea 
steps into one. And that's pretty good defense there by McCabe. Draws the defender. Reverse. Extra one. Mobley. Really good effort on the glass. Lower Marion. Yes. Dagger. Dagger. Wow. Back to four. That's a big offensive rebound for Lower Marion. They're not going away. Milan Dean. And again, they're being energized by this full court pressure. Green, stay hot. Yes. Oh. Here we go, folks. Ice water in his veins. Back and forth. Kazmer. McCabe, it would have been a deep one. Another offensive carom. Do it a third time, McCabe. Uh-huh. Dagger again. That was NBA ring. Offensive rebound. Kick out three are killers. Anybody having fun yet? Green. They got numbers again. Bethea, he just wants to get to the rim. Really good oh. look for Tahir Howell. Willing passer. Yeah, so unselfish there to get the high percentage shot. I really? mean, that's drawing three defenders, Matt, and then handing it off at the weak side block. Really impressive choice. He could have easily taken it. McCabe! Owen McCabe! Three-point game. Got to keep their composure. Good job cycling that out. Mike Green. You've got to be kidding me! Oh! Everybody's standing at every made three-point basket. This is one of those games where you know you're watching a special one. Mobley. Great luck, and Robinson is fouled. That should be four against Jaleel Bethea. We'll confirm with the public address announcer. It is. It's uh, only his third. His third personal. Give credit to Mobley for finding weak side Robinson. Bounce pass wide open. Almost the chance at an AM1. Well, whatever Mike Green had for breakfast, that's what I'm having tomorrow. <laughs> How about Owen McCabe? Yeah, I mean, it is it is quite the long-range shooting contest right now. Really impressive, the confidence in this environment to take these shots. Green coming out of the game. Unconscious shooters are the best shooters. Two of two. And in comes Heron Cole. Huh, did I miss anything since the last time I've been on the floor, guys? I don't know, but how big <laughs> is it that Lower Marion has no timeouts? It could become very big. Clock not stopping after made baskets inside the final minute. They got to get to the point where it matters. Right now it's a four-point game. Anybody's ball game. Reed pulls it back. Milan Dean. That clock is moving. And now they wave it off. Does this remind you what Lower Marion did earlier? Sure it does. does. Josh Reed just gave up a layup. Oh. Nearly gave it away. And there's the foul. Just the first team foul against Lower Marion here in the fourth quarter. And that could be a problem, too. They've got to foul four more times to stop the clock. They're bringing in Gus Wright. I, I think he's going to take a couple fouls. Um, you know, they, they do have to manage the clock, but Archbishop Woods they, needs to stay on the attack here. You know, Coach Downer can do that. I guess stop it a little bit by, by substituting. Second team foul against Lower Marion. You can also use, we have a, we have a messenger guard. He's probably telling him what play he wants, Ron. He's telling the player and then he's substituting them on in. <laughs> Sideline out of bounds. Sometimes tough to get the ball in bounds. Wow, right by that third defender, the midcourt stripe. Milan Dean is fouled, and that's a good foul. The lower Marion contingent didn't love it at first, but take two points off the board there for Archbishop Wood. Boy, every possession so magnified right now. Question is, are they going to bring the ball out or are they going to stay in attack mode here? 
and burn some clock. Here comes the double on Reed. Milan Dean, a good head fake. Mm. And they got the steal. John Mosco cannot believe it. Give it to McCabe. Just a little short, but who else do you want taking that shot? Jaleel Bethea. Maxi missed. Maxi got it to go. Give him an offensive rebound and two points for his troubles, and it couldn't come at a bigger time. Well, all I can say about Deuce Maxi and Mike Green is that those are the Robins that have really stepped it up for Archbishop Wood. And the Jalil Bethea, hey, Batman, I mean, he's made his appearance here in the second half. And now Archbishop Wood here with a six-point lead. Um, you know, everything's kind of checked in their favor, Matt. Yeah, the momentum shifted on that play, the out-of-bounds uh, save by Green. Uh, I, I really like uh, the offensive glass. They're just staying on the offensive glass, the, the Vikings from Archbishop Wood. Uh, missing two in a row, little bunnies. Uh, but they stayed with it and got that really important six point. One twelve to go. It's a six point game. Thanks to Archbishop Wood for sponsoring the telecast, as well as Faulkner Infinity, a proud sponsor. Two possession game. No timeouts, as we mentioned, for Lower Marion. They don't need a three at this point. It that, certainly would help. That timeout gave Greg Downer a chance to set up a play. And he's three for three out of those timeouts running plays thus far. Could have been a moving screen. It was a good slip to the hole by Kazmer. They want a three here. Aaron Cole. And they got a wide open one. Kazmer couldn't hit it. And it's taken away. Robinson, yes. Mr. Robinson. Heck of a footwork. Well, Finish. That, that's Challenging a- position to catch the ball. Howell. They, they picked they got, up his dribble. They have timeouts if they need it. And a foul is called. Fourth team foul against Lower Marion. And this is where the challenge comes in with the current state of high school rules. Clock does not stop under a minute after a made basket like at any level above high school. And so when it's a two-point possession, two-possession game, Lower Marion knows they need two scores. At a minimum, they'll send Reed to the line with 24 seconds left. Unless they're fouled, Lower Marion, and have a chance to score with the clock stopped. Take what, five, seven? Could be 10 seconds off the clock. And Archbishop Wood can let that ball bounce around until the official hands it to them on the baseline. And then 1,001, 1,002, up to 1,005. Archbishop Wood has four timeouts. So if you're John Mosco, Matt Paul, I'm going to turn to my coach here. Even if Lower Marion makes a basket, are you telling your guys don't touch the ball and then make an official give it to you and then count 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, call one of your four timeouts at that point to take as much time off the clock as you can? Uh, Yes, I do. Uh, they got plenty of timeouts left. Uh, Coach Mosco likes to save them. Uh, Expect, again, a three-point attempt here. Mobley. You'd think it has to be a three at this point. And they get a decent one. Mobley is fouled. Oh. And that is the doomsday scenario for Archbishop Wood where you can cut it to a two-point deficit and no time comes off the clock after the made basket. The clock stops. But still, only 13.3 seconds remaining. It's 13.3 that becomes 8 or 9, Bruce, even if he makes the shot. Yeah. That's a tough miss. I once fouled a guy, Mark McGonigal. We were up 3. He hits a bank 3 and makes the free throw to go up 1. Final high school game. Wow. So it's possible. (laughs) This one certainly has to go. To make it a three-point deficit. Got a foul right away. Don't fail uh, Bethea uh, or Green. Green. They're both their top free throw shooters. Milan Dean also 82% on the year. Three-point game, 13 seconds left. Lower Marion looking for a steal. 
And it's Milan Dean, the 82% foul shooter on the year. Eighty-two percent with twelve seconds left, and a crowded gym is different than shooting them at home. Um, Some pressure here, not as much when you're up three, um, but this guy looks like he knows what he's doing. Milan Dean, some of the biggest free throws of his career. Pure. Yeah, and I think they might want to put a little bit of pressure on him just to kind of slow up the momentum going toward the basket. Obviously not wanting a foul, but they could. Only three team fouls. Correct. Five-point lead. Need a three if you're lower Marion. Heron call is fouled. Yep. And they did have one to give. So that's just the fourth team foul. It's a great foul because now with no timeouts, even after a made basket, clock's going to continue to run. This game's over. They got to score, you know. Now. I mean, right. <laughs> this game is just about over. Archbishop Wood is well coached. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised had John decided to call a timeout there. A three is no good. And the season's going to roll on for Archbishop Wood. That one does count at the horn for Kazmer. Archbishop Wood marches on and gives Lower Marion just the second loss of the season. The District 1 champs have been eliminated. All right, our buddy Bob Long's going to get down there in all the mayhem and try and get an interview here with uh, Coach Mosco. But, uh, oh, my God, Matt, I tell you what, you know, you talked about how you were going to be so interested to see the chess match between these two coaches tonight. And I just marveled at, first off, all the items that uh, Greg Downer drew up at timeouts. I mean, we talked about the fact that he did so well there. But then John Mosco here, he kind of pulls it on him too by taking the air out of the ball at the end, taking away some momentum, and, uh, you know, Lower Marion really had a tough time to get that uh, energy back. Yeah, when they had a uh, few timeouts left with about five minutes to go, uh, you know, they ran out of timeouts. Uh, they weren't able to stop the game, um, you know, settle themselves down. The Vikings just got up and down the floor and got whatever they wanted. That dunk by Jaleel Bethea, that's going to be on uh, Instagram or whatever other social media platform that people like. Uh, that's one um, I'll never forget. I was glad to be a part of the broadcast to see something like that. Yeah, and, but, you know, Jalil Bethea, uh, he got involved in the second half, and those role players, Deuce Maxey, Mike Green, tell you what, real contributors tonight. Yeah, on both ends of the floor, give credit to Lower Marion. Uh, the what a moment for Jalil Bethea here. We'll let him enjoy this moment for one second. Jalil Bethea, John Mosco with us. It is a melee down here. Jalil, I have one question for you. Best dunk in your high school career? Uh, I would definitely say that's top two, not two. Most definitely. Uh, I've literally playing that the whole time. I've been waiting for somebody to do that all season. Back up, try to take a charge. I just rise over him, and he was a smaller defender. So it was kind of, I just rose over him, that was it. We talked about it against Methacton. The fourth quarter was once again your time, and you willed this team to victory. Uh, I feel like I feel like this game, going into this game, I already knew I was going to get, like, double team and boxing one the whole game. So the only thing I had to do is basically just trust my teammates, and that's exactly what I did the whole game. There was talk prior to this game about you guys as a private school, Lower Marion, the champions of District 1. Did you hear it, and did it affect you at all? No, not really. I really don't even worry about stuff like that. The only thing I worry about is my team and and the way we play. And what's next for you guys? You got a big game coming up. You got three more in you? Of course. We definitely got three more in you. We all the way to the States. Best of luck. Thanks again for doing this, and congratulations on a special night. Thank you. I'm a little mad at him. He didn't give me credit for for teaching him that dunk. (laughs) John. Congratulations. This one has to feel good. It does feel good. Um, you know, a lot of, not pressure, but, you know, we're on the road, you know, 
game with their their crowds. They were fired up. They played well. They played patient. My guys didn't want to play patient in the beginning, and they're worried about, you know, them holding the ball. But in the first quarter, second quarter, you could hold the ball. You know, I'm not going to chase you, and that's what I tried to tell them. They weren't up eight to ten points. So once, you know, we were able to get the lead, then they can hold the ball. And I don't. We in the fourth quarter, we got some great stops, and then zero just showed up. And he, he, you know, he showed what a great player he is, making shot after shot. I don't know how we lose him, but you know that we'll have to look at the tape. But no, he he played really hard. Uh, a great program, great team, well coached, and you know our my guys just fought for me the whole time. Mike Green answered every time Owen McKay made a big time three. That was one of those moments where you knew you were in the midst of a special game when those two guys were going at it and Jalil was doing his thing. Yeah, exactly. I thought. I thought Mike stepped up. I thought Deuce stepped up early. Uh, Mir stepped up with great defense on Owen for a little stretch there. And then after they called their last time out, he just put them on their shoulder to try to will them back. But we just had too many firepower down the end. And I was happy without even telling them to hold the ball. We slowed it down. And, you know, we took a lot of clock off. And Jalil, you know, I argued with him most of the game, just relax. You might need 20 assists. And then he was he was relaxed, and then it came, and then he got open, and you know, he's just a special player. Your road through the state tournament thus far has gone through District One, Methacton, Lower Marion. We know that you'll get another District One opponent. Those watching the game probably know who won Springford and Springford Delco. We're sitting here, we don't. We know it's going to go through District One again. What have you learned these first two matchups? That they're tough. They shoot the three. They play really disciplined. A lot of back doors. They share the ball, and they're all well coached. Um, our president's probably happy because we're staying local. We don't need to get a bus to go too far. Well, hopefully we'll be there with you, John. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, I would think it would probably be at Norristown or, you know, Springfield, Delco, or Springfield. There you go. A, a expert coach and a scheduler as well. We'll add it to, we'll add it to your tab. Wherever they put us, I don't, you know, our, my guys just come out and play. We'll let you get to your guys. Thanks. John Mosco with us. Back to you guys. Okay, Bob. Uh, Bruce Badgley, Matt Paul back up here in the broadcast booth. Matt, you've got some uh, really telling stats here about this game. Uh, both teams uh, shot 50% from the three-point uh, range. Uh, you got That's lower, incredible. 10 for 20 for Lower Marion and 8 for 16 for Archbishop Wood. Both teams also had... Four players in double digits. Um, McCabe with 15, Mobley 14, Kazmer 11, Robinson with 15 points. And on the Wood uh, Viking side, Maxi Bethea, uh, 13 points, Maxi with 10, Green with 15 points uh, on five of eight of shooting. Outstanding game for him, four of seven from three. Um, Dean had six, Reed had 11, and Hal just under the. Um, the 10 point mark at nine, four, five from, uh, the field. Uh, overall, outstanding game. Uh, very few turnovers. Uh, Lower Marion really took care of the ball. Uh, fewer than 10 turnovers. And Archbishop Wood with six turnovers. Wow. Uh, incredible basketball game with highlights. Uh, great individual play. But both teams really played great team basketball. And that was the thing that I, uh, appreciated the most, especially with it. A guy like Bethea, who could easily take over the game, he trusted his teammates. He made the right plays. Clearly, he listened to Coach Mosco and um, just let the game come to him. And that dunk, he didn't let that come to him. He went and dunked that ball uh, like I've never seen before. So congratulations to him, John Mosco, and the Vikings. Yeah, and, you know, it is just so telling, too, as well. Uh, you know, these teams perform so highly, and I think that's just a testament to the great coaching on each side. These guys came in here, obviously they're experienced teams, but they're so well prepared. And that's, you know, what we talked about. It was reflective in the turnovers, you know, because there's pressure up and down both teams the entire game. Yet these guys knew where their teammates were. They knew where the ball needed to go, and they made good decisions. And a lot of that's coming from from the coaching, right? Fundamental fundamental basketball. It was really great to see. Even the footwork. Uh, on Robinson on that late play, uh, him, him pivoting and getting that bucket, uh, reverse pivots, 
uh, Archbishop Wood using, using everything they could to get those offensive rebounds. The Mike Green out of bounds pass, I think, was the thing that sealed it for Archbishop Wood, changed the momentum of the game, uh, and what a play that was. Well, our buddy Bob Long, I mean, basically just, uh, totally sapped out after, I mean, <laughs> uh, a call in this game. I tell, right. I mean, the, your final thoughts here on this one. My final thoughts. Lower Marion, incredible season. One that'll go down in history. Ran into a buzzsaw here tonight. Jaleel Bethea does it in the fourth quarter again. Shout out to Mike Green, who matched Owen McCabe shot for shot and made that one of the most special fourth quarters that I can remember. This game will live on, if for no other reason, and there are many other reasons that it will, right to the top of the list, Jaleel Bethea bringing the house down. That's why I had to ask him. Best dunk of your high school career. Yeah, it wasn't no. number two, he said. <laughs> that was a great response. Uh, you know, he says he's been waiting for that. You know, his teammate got him the ball. And I think uh, the big thing I saw here tonight uh, was Jaleel's um, trusting his teammates. Uh, if he can continue to do that and let the game come to him, they're a tough out. Uh, I don't I don't see uh, how you can beat them when he plays as unselfishly as he did, only scoring 13 points. But his teammates really stepped up in a big way. We'll close up shop here. Have to thank Brady Joyce, who is just our all-star cameraman. He's been working with us all year long with our games through LaSalle and the Philadelphia Catholic League. This is not the same without him. Bruce Badgley, when it comes to February and March, it means it's our time to work together. It's been great, partner. Well done. And Matt Paul, newest addition to the team, the coach, doing an excellent job breaking it down. And we just appreciate both of your guys' contributions. I want to thank everybody for watching alongside as well. What a tremendous gym for a tremendous contest. Only one can move on. And tonight it's the Vikings of Archbishop Wood who will be preparing for a District 1 opponent in the state quarterfinals on Saturday. We certainly hope to be there. So for Matt Paul, Bruce Badgley, Brady Joyce, Bob Long saying so long from Ben Salem High School, the site of a classic here tonight. Archbishop Wood moves on and gets back to the state quarterfinal. It's been a regular thing for them. We hopefully will be talking to you all on Saturday. Have a great rest of your evening.